Grace Sherwood was a normal girl, a natural outdoorsman, a wife, a mother, a farmer, and to others, a witch. Well, Grace was born out in Pungo in the year 1660 to a uh, farmer. In 1680, she married John Sherwood, and he was a carpenter. And upon getting married, Grace's father gave them 50 acres of land, and they started farming it. So all told, they, they farmed over 190 acres out in Pungo, and they had three sons. Now, they were poor. They did not have any slaves. It was a lot of land to work. You're not going to work in the fields in a colonial costume. So Grace wore britches, which was an absolute no-no. That's why everybody thought she was a witch, because she wasn't like them. She didn't sit around and, you know, knit and in the porch swing and talk to her lady friends. and. She was farming with her husband and her sons. She was a midwife and she was a healer. If she made you well, you were, everybody loved you, but of course if something went wrong, they would immediately turn the tables on you. Elizabeth Hill, Grace Sherwood's neighbor, brought these charges against Grace due to her own failing harvest. She didn't like Grace. You know, Grace was, like I said, in her overalls and doing things women didn't do um, that were, quote, inappropriate. Elizabeth did not like her at all, and when Elizabeth had a miscarriage, it was around the same time as the crops were dying and the cows stopped producing milk, and so she assumed, she was positive, she thought, that Grace had cursed her, had put a curse on her. The final straw occurred one frightful night. Elizabeth woke up, unable to move anything but her eyes, she claims Grace came into her room and sat on her chest, a charge known then as haggarding. So they said, oh, well, what the hell are we going to do with her now? So they decided, okay, they would look for the marks of the devil on her. And they got 12 women to strip her naked. And of course they found a mark or a freckle or whatever, and they were the marks of the devil. So now she had to be tried by water, water being considered very pure, and if she was uh, a witch, the water would expel her, so she would float. If she was innocent, she would sink. Of course, she'd also be dead, but you know that didn't come into their thinking. It was like Black Friday. Everybody came out to see the ducking of the witch of Pongo. So as they were about to throw her in the water, she looked around in a very loud, booming voice. She said, all oh, you poor white trash, or we're stucking upon ye before this day be done. And they all kind of laughed and such. And they threw her in the water and Grace could swim. So she came up. That's when she started to cackle because the skies had just opened up. And when they threw her in and she did not drown, she came up, they were like, oh, she's a witch. So she was then thrown into the jail, which is now the chapel at Old Donation Church and she stayed there for approximately eight years. We have no record of why she was let go, if somebody just thought it all had died down or whatever. I think she lived a very lonely old age. I think she, the rest of her life, I think she was probably fairly lonely. And the story goes that she was sitting by the fire uh, this one night and when her son came in in the morning, she was dead and there were hoof prints in the ashes of the fireplace, meaning the devil had come to get her soul. We now know that a lot of the grain that the uh, colonial women cooked with and ate was tainted. Uh, these hallucinations they had of poor Grace uh, were caused by what they were eating, not by Grace. And Grace was kind of her worst enemy too. She didn't back off. We kind of do the same thing today as we ostracize people that are different from us. My bottom line is Grace was born 350 years too soon. She was a modern day woman. She would have fitted in perfectly today, but she wasn't. 
Were any of these charges true? Or was Grace Sherwood harshly judged for being herself? Either way, her legacy has been sealed. <laughs>